Okay, so we just learned about compound formulas and how to calculate molar masses. Um, from that chemical formula and using the molar masses, um, we have um, very useful information giving the relative amounts of each element in a compound. And so this is often expressed as a mass percent composition. And so we're looking at what percent by mass of the whole molecule is this one particular element that we're interested in. Um, so this is a useful thing to remember. This is a general definition of, of a percentage. A percentage is the part that you're interested in divided by the whole thing and then multiplied by, by 100 to give you a percentage. You can do this with how many, you know, what percentage of the kindergarten class is boys versus girls, what percentage of people voted Republican. I mean, you could just do anything. The part that you're interested in divided by the whole thing. So percent by mass of an element in a compound, um, we can do this using experimental data or by using the formula. Let's look at the formula first. If we're looking at element X, the percent of X in the compound is the mass of X in one mole of the compound divided by the mass of one mole of the compound times 100. If we're looking at experimental analysis, um, we're going to find the mass of X divided by the mass of the whole compound times 100. Um, if you find the percent for each element, ideally they would add up to 100, but sometimes they'll be a little bit off due to rounding errors. So if they rounded off, you know, if you added them up and you got 99.9%, .9%, you'd say, well, there's uncertainty in that last digit, it's okay. So let's do an example. Acetic acid is the active ingredient in vinegar. Calculate the mass percent composition of oxygen in acetic acid. And let's just look at this name and formula for a minute. Acetic acid, from what we learned today, is that a binary acid or an oxyacid? It's an oxyacid. And the ic came, came from eight, right? And so this is from the acetate ion. And acetate is C2H3O2 minus. So even though this formula looks like a big old mess, it's actually just following the same pattern as something like perchloric acid does. And the reason that this H is written separately from the other three is that this is the hydrogen that becomes an ion when you dissolve it in water. So if we're looking at the mass percent composition of oxygen, so we want percent oxygen. We want to find grams of oxygen divided by grams of the whole thing and multiply by 100. Well, if we were doing an experiment and we actually had numbers that we measured, we could just plug those in, but we don't. So what we do is we just choose one mole we can calculate the mass of one mole just using the molar mass. So let's do that. One mole of that would be, um, well, you can put the hydrogens in separately if you want, or you can put them together. What would you like to do? Together. So then there's a total of four hydrogens, and they each weigh 1.008. And there's two carbons, and they're each 12.01. And there's uh, two oxygens, and those are each 16. So we're just using the molar mass of acetic acid here. So the molar mass is the mass of one mole. And the mass of the compound is um, kind of nonspecific. 
like, do you have an actual sample? We could say, well, what's the mass of that sample of the compound? Um, so just saying the mass of the sample doesn't really specify, I mean, the mass of the compound doesn't specify how much of the compound. Does that help? Um, kind of? I'm just, I feel like I'm just confused whether like, this number is the same as the mass of it. Well, this, this is the mass in grams of one mole of the compound. So it's like the mass of a dozen eggs. Ask me again later if it's still not clear, okay? So we're, we're choosing to use a sample of one mole, and we find that this is the mass of the compound, one mole of the compound. And so that's the number that goes in the denominator. That's the mass of the whole thing. And what's the mass of oxygen in this? It's 32. It, one of the advantages of writing this all out is that's the oxygen right there. So the oxygen is that term, 2 times 16, or we could write 32 grams, and then we multiply by 100. How many significant figures should this have? Four. And that's limited by the uh, number of digits I used in the molar masses. So 55.29% oxygen. Yeah, so if we write this out with all the units, which I'm leaving out right now, we have four moles of hydrogen, and those are 1.008 grams per mole of hydrogen. And then we can do that with all of them. So that's what the units are doing. Okay? So 55.29% oxygen. Any questions? Did I do it wrong? Yeah, it is 53. I don't, I don't know why I did that. Like I often say, I'd like to say that I did that to see if you're paying attention, but that would be lying. I just did it wrong. So thank you for letting me know. 53.29. That's one of the reasons I started doing that, putting the, the answer up there, because sometimes the students don't tell me, and then it's embarrassing later, and I get all these comments on my YouTube channel. So mass percent can be calculated from the molar mass. We can also use this mass percent as a conversion factor to convert between the mass of an element and the mass of the compound. So percent literally means per hundred, right? There's a hundred centimeters in a meter. There's a hundred years in a century, right? So cent refers to a hundred. So this is per hundred. So if we see the statement like this, Freon 112 is 69.58% chlorine by mass, we can use this and can turn it into a conversion factor because this is saying there are 69.58 grams of chlorine per 100 grams of the compound. Everybody okay with that? My oldest son's kindergarten class was 75% boys. So, out of 100 children, how many boys would that be? 75, right? This means 75 boys per 100 children in the class. 
they actually had a great year. In spite of the fact that in addition to 75% boys, half of the children spoke no English at the beginning of the year. But they had a great year, and they all learned, and it was, it was great. I was glad later that I didn't know that at the beginning of the year, because I might have been worried. What's this teacher going to do? But she was so awesome. So we can do problems like this. What mass in grams of iron three oxide contains 58.7 grams of iron? Iron three oxide is 69.94% iron by mass. Um, we could use the formula and the molar mass and, and figure it out that way. But here, we are given the percent by mass. And so that's a lot faster. So we're going to use that. So reading the problem and then looking for the numbers. The numbers are 58.7 grams of iron. And then I've got 69.94% iron. Well, that means 69.94 grams of iron per 100 grams of something, 100 grams of the compound, right? So I could write iron 3 oxide, or I could write the formula, which would be fewer things to write. What am I trying to find? No, but it's tempting, isn't it? So iron three oxide. So we've got iron and we've got oxygen. And what's the charge on the oxygen ion? Two negative. What's the charge on the iron? Plus three. How do you know that? The Roman numerals. So the Roman numeral is telling me the charge. And oops. Yeah, Fe2O3. So I'm trying to find grams of the compound. And since we figured out what the formula is, let's go ahead and use that. So how do I get from grams of iron to grams of Fe2O3? We could use the molar mass. But we could also use this percentage that was given, right? Because this gives us a relationship between mass of iron and mass of the compound. So I can do this just in one step. So 58.7 grams of iron the one fraction. I'm trying to find grams of Fe2O3, and I need grams of Fe in the denominator. This is an example of where it's important to specify grams of what. So if I just put grams in there, I'm going to get messed up. I put the units in, and then I go to my expansion here of what percent means, and I see there's 69.94 grams of iron per 100 grams of the compound. Well, the iron is in the denominator, and so 69.94 goes down there, and the compound is in the numerator, the 100 goes up there. There's no thinking about do I multiply or divide. You put the units in, the units tell you where to put the number, and then you just multiply and divide across. So 58.7 times the top, which is 100, divided by the bottom, 69.94. 83.929, and it keeps going, and I don't want to write down everything, and so then I think about sig figs. Three. I should have three sig figs here because my starting mass only had three significant figures. 
The percentage I was given is not an exact number, but it had four. So I'm gonna round this to three. So I've got two extras there. I'm gonna call this 83.9 grams of Fe2. That's not the only way to solve a problem like this. It's not the only way to use the mass percent to solve this problem. But I think it's the most straightforward way without learning new things. Any questions? Eighty-three point nine grams. So we can use the chemical formula as a conversion factor, and when we aren't given the mass percent, this is what we're going to use. So the chemical formula has this relationship between numbers of atoms and numbers of molecules, or moles of atoms and moles of molecules. Um, so if we look at the formula for um, freon twelve. Uh, C2, Cl4, F2. We can make two conversion factors. Actually, we can make more than two, but two of the possible ones are we can say, well, there's two moles of carbon in one mole of this compound. Or we can say there are four moles of chlorine in one mole of the compound. What's another one we could write? Two moles of fluorine, two moles of fluorine in one mole of the compound. Okay, it's important to remember this, that chemical formulas give relationship amounts be in moles, not masses in grams. Be a lot shorter if we could just use grams there, but we can't, it's moles, it's numbers of atoms. So determine the mass of oxygen in a 7.2 gram sample of Al2SO43. What would the name of that be? Uh, aluminum sulfate. Does aluminum need a Roman numeral? No. Because no. it's in group 3 and it always has a 3 plus charge. And we don't need to do anything with this 2, this 3. It's not a 2. We don't need to say trisulfate because it's the charges that tell us how many. Okay, so we've got... 7.2 grams of Al2 SO4 3 and we're trying to find what? Mass of oxygen. I'm just going to erase this because it's in the way. So I'm trying to find grams of oxygen. I can't go directly if I was given the mass percent, I could, but I don't have that. I could calculate it, but it really wouldn't be any faster than doing it using the chemical formula as a conversion factor. So from grams of the compound, what can I find? I can use the molar mass and find moles of the compound. I didn't give myself enough room. From moles of compound, can I find moles of oxygen? Yeah, just by looking at the formula. And then from moles of oxygen, I can find grams of oxygen using the molar mass of oxygen. Because I don't know how many grams of oxygen are in a given amount of the compound. If I had a percent, a mass percent, I could do it that way. But I don't. So the, the formula tells me that there's 3 times 4, 12 oxygen, 12 moles of oxygen in one mole of this. But it doesn't give me any information about the, the uh, mass. So 
I'm sorry, it's 7.2 grams. And so I'm going to convert this to moles of the compound. And then I'm going to convert to moles of oxygen. And then I'm going to convert to grams of oxygen. So grams of compound go down there. So those cancel. And moles goes down there. And moles goes down here. Now, if, if you have a good grasp of calculations like this, there are probably some terms that you can combine in your head. Um, and if you're good at that, go for it. But most of us should just stick with this. So mass and moles of the compound, that's gonna be the molar mass. Right? So then I just need to calculate that. Two times the mass of aluminum, how many sulfurs do I have? Three. Three sulfurs. And, oops, how many oxygens? Not seven. Twelve. So I could think of this sulfate as being a wagon with four wheels. And this is saying I have three wagons. So then I need to multiply 3 times 4 rather than add. So 12 times 1.008. Pardon me? Yes. Where is my brain? I left it at home, I think. Two times twenty six point nine eight plus three times thirty two point zero seven plus twelve times sixteen. Meaning the three forty two point seventeen. That's the mass in grams of one mole of that compound. So one mole of the um, aluminum sulfate is going to weigh 342.17 grams. And then how many moles of oxygen per mole of compound? Bless you. 12. 12 moles of oxygen in one mole of compound. And I'm getting that from the chemical formula. 3 times 4 is 12. There's 12 oxygens in one of these units. And then the molar mass of oxygen is 16 grams per mole. So 7.2 divided by 342.17 times 12 times 16. How many sig figs should my answer have? Two. Because I started with only two. So I'm going to report the answer here as 4.0 grams of oxygen. Any questions?